Um, but I, I figured out his strategy. And I'm going to share it with you, Christian. And I share it to the, the early OG followers on how to win at Blackjack. So, Blackjack, all right, we're back, boys. Another episode. So much to talk about. Just so much. I'm keen. But last week, we couldn't talk about Jake Paul versus Ben Asker. Oh, look. I'll start, we'll, we'll start it again. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 32. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening in. But, yeah, a lot has happened in the last week. So, um, yeah, so much happened. Like, we didn't even realize, yeah, Jake Paul versus Ben Askren, that fully happened last week. There was the European Super League that got announced. I don't know if you heard about that or if you heard the little things about that. That was huge. I rocked, like, world news. Um, yeah, like, Jake Paul keeps piping on, like... I don't know if you saw all oh, starts. So Jake Paul versus Ben Askren. How do, what were your thoughts on it? I'm gonna try and see if I can see a video. I was like, damn, like that was fast. Um, I was expecting Ben to put up a solid fight. I thought it was gonna go a few rounds, but man, like Jake Paul is like, he's like giving it his all. Like I think he's like, bodyguard who's been with him 24 7 for the last few years also passed away literally 10 days before the fight so he had a lot of like he was gone all in yeah Um, and then now he's back to chirping which is you know his thing i know that behind the scenes is like this normal guy that's really sweet apparently uh, uh, I don't know like, about that what, know what you that. see is like a persona and now he's chirping to get the next fight going like uh, I don't like him at all. I really don't like him at all. So just to see him doing, not even just doing well, just like I just don't like the guy at all in terms of anything. But like, okay, so he was an MMA fighter. This is like meant to be, it was touted to be his first like proper fight. It was meant to be, you know, he's finally got a decent challenge. It's like he's been facing some random weird people. Now he's got like a real challenge and everyone thought, okay, bro, you can't, the, the sports are very different. MMA is like, combat grappling you know shit show sport whereas boxing is methodical like thought out like kind of beautiful in a way that it's a systematic sport i don't know man i I just i think people are getting hyped up on him very much like he's he's going around he's chirping his mouth which is yeah what he's good at saying i'm gonna be the next world champion i'm gonna be this shut your mouth you're not you know you're not but fair play to him he secured a very very nice looking bag it's a beautiful bag. I think it was a $1 million size bag. Crazy. It was mental. Mental. And I'm pretty sure he received a lot more because, like, the TikTok, the TikTok is their boxing match. I think Bryce Hall, Austin Abroom, I don't know how to pronounce his name, they're getting 5 mil just to step in. So I'm pretty sure Jake Paul... 5 million. I'm pretty sure Jake Paul has gotten a lot. Like, the Logan Paul versus okay, Mayweather, sorry. that's like... At least that's in the eight figures, like ten mil plus, fifty mil potential. I don't know what, how big, but like not maybe not fifty mil big, but like the payday is like definitely ten figures. And I think Jake Paul uh, probably at least five mil. If like a TikToker is getting five mil, it begs the question though, like why would Mayweather risk his legacy? Yeah, to go into that fight. So it has to be a lot of money. It has to be like fifty mil maybe. Who it's knows? gotta be like heavy millions like really big millions and it's like god damn it dude how much money is there to make with this crap like who i can't believe people like obviously i want to see logan versus mayweather just to see like logan paul versus mayweather youtuber versus arguably one of the greatest lightweight boxers of all time i don't know anything about boxing right so i'm not going to pretend i do but you got that but on top of that, recently Jake Paul went to because you know he's been running his mouth at like UFC president like Dana White and everything, right? So like, not only has he been running his mouth at everyone, he's like, like the president of UFC, I think, or the owner of UFC or the founder, whatever, right? And when you have the founder of the UFC coming at you saying that he hates you and that he wants nothing to do with you, you're doing something right in terms of publicity, in terms of getting your brand out there, because he's he's embracing the problem child right he was at ufc 261 that event the entire crowd is screaming 
Jake Paul and he's there lapping it up being like yeah I don't care I don't care about anyone or anything like he's winning and everyone's giving him what he wants exactly and like he's like he's doing what people did to Mayweather like you know how like May- everyone hates Mayweather oh, at the time people like hated him it was like people were like he was so cocky people hated him yeah. but people wanted him to lose and as a result people bought into every single match and that's exactly what Jake Paul's doing. He's building up haters. And that's another thing. I am starting to embrace the haters. Like, it, it's, it's, it's hard, it's annoying. But if you have haters, you sort of, you have to be, you're doing something right. And I prefer to have a ton of haters and change them over time. Like, I know who I am. I know the amount of value that I provide. And if I could attract a bunch of haters, like, a thousand haters and change them into fans over time that's better than like trying so hard to keep a clean image and attracting like a hundred cool people because i could get a thousand haters and change 300 of them into cool people yeah well you, th- there has been some sparking up there has been some coming up in the instagram comments they've been there like there was a lot like I think it was probably it was probably all the same account. Probably. Yes, that guy just has so much time on his hand, man. But there was a lot of accounts. Like there was a lot of different accounts. Like how is he so bothered? I know. There was so many. It was definitely one guy because it was the same message. And yeah. well, for context, one guy went around and literally replied to everyone on Andy's latest Instagram story. Everyone, everyone that commented. Yeah. And then trying to downplay his name on a public image, like on a public forum like that. It's just like. Okay, well, I, I I don't know. It's it's kind of annoying, eh? Like I'd lose it. I would get so pissed. Dude, sure. I was, when I saw that, I was that ruined my Friday. It was the longest day. Freaking had the interns come through, filmed all morning, filmed a bunch of TikToks, um, did a bunch of work, and then it was like six thirty p.m. And I was like, I don't Ready really feel off. like going to this like this farm. I was meeting up some friends. At their farm, it was like a three hour drive. It was already dark, the sun was down. I was like, What a shit day! Like, I'm on my phone and freaking I'm seeing all these bad messages. Mm. Um, and I'm like, I just want to just sleep, go, go, go to bed. Yeah, but I sort of knew that I had to like go because I knew that I was gonna, you know, really appreciate if I went. I'm gonna thank myself. I knew it was the right decision. So I forced myself to grow. Driving in the night is the worst. Uh, uh, like driving in the night- is it's dangerous. It's so dangerous. Like, especially on dirt roads, on narrow roads, windy roads. It's like, oh, it was, it was bad. It was dangerous. Yeah. But, and I know signal acid. Like when you get roughly two hours away, there's like an hour road, 45 minutes inwards in, into the forest, into the inland. And that 45 minute, you have no no signal. Oh and it's God. the windiest roads. And there's freaking road, there's like dead kangaroos on the road. Like I yeah. saw a dead kangaroo right in the middle. And I was like, oh, and I couldn't slow down. So I just kept driving and I made sure to like align myself where the kangaroo was in the middle. And I thought it would have hurt nothing, but I heard the bump. Boom, boom. I was like, oh shit. I just drove over the sides of the kangaroo. That sucks. But luckily I didn't see any kangaroos jump on the road. That would have been bad. Um, but I'm lucky. I'm, I'm happy that I made that decision because it was a really good weekend. If you didn't go, you would have been kicking yourself because you needed to have that time off to take your mind off it. You stay at home, you're in the same surroundings, in the same environment, and, and then the thoughts just come back and then you won't enjoy your weekend. You remove yourself from the environment. You had a good time. Did you Did you enjoy yourself? And guess what? Like literally at the time, that issue was like so annoying. But after two days, I'd go on my phone, I'll see all these bad comments. I'll, I'll be like, oh, well, this is actually not too bad. It's just one kid that has too much time on his hand, copy and pasting the same messages, probably DMing all these people as well. Um, but like, you know, he can do it for a whole year, but I'm in it for like the next 40 years. What's one person commenting random shit for one year in my 40 year career gonna do? And I, embrace it. I needed to learn how to embrace it because as I grow like, if I want to be like the next Mark Zuckerberg and have a freaking social media for education, 
Mark is like freaking dealing with so much real hate, freaking from big people, important people, like freaking celebrities or news anchors bashing him, and he's able to stay cool. So if I can't like deal with one annoying little kid, how am I going to get to that level? So I was like, oh damn, this is like a good training experience. And I also watched some anime, and I realized in anime, like a lot of these main characters, they have a lot of like enemies and a lot of haters. But they have their own core group of friends that know who they are. And even if the world hates them, it's all right. If you have like a solid group of friends that know who you are. It's through adversity in which you shine, in which you're able to grow stronger. Trust me, bro. There's one guy. There's probably like a young teenager. Got too much time on his hands. He's probably so keen probably didn't make money and he's probably pissed off and blames you for it and then as a result just goes around and around but like what can you do you're right like zuckerberg's literally got real shit he's got like public hearings with all that shit going on he's like like real shit going on you know what i mean like what's one person gonna do it's fine it's all right it's not gonna stop you enjoying your freaking holiday one kid that's just pissed like probably uses parents money as well to invest in in the course and everything you know what i mean it's just it's pretty funny, not gonna lie. Like I was reading some of it, I was like, bro, this guy's bothered. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, I think like, in my mind, I was like, okay, the worst case scenario is that he makes some people or some friends or some followers think I'm a scammer and they believe him. So that's probably the worst that can happen. And if that happens, that is just like a natural fil- filter for all the fake friends and a natural filter all the followers that aren't really followers because if they actually followed my content they knew who i was so yes i was going to lose 10 percent of friends 10 percent of followers 10 percent of customers but that's not the 10 percent i want anyways it's a business for a reason like in terms of you you just can't hold on to something if some people are just willing to let go like you can't stop you can't stop the train just for three people that missed it you know what i mean in that term in the sense that like it's hard to like you got to just keep moving forward because if you don't keep moving forward what's the point there's no point in you doing what you're doing otherwise you're just always going to be like oh maybe i should be listening to them and then every single complaint or thing that you get you'll be like oh maybe i should do this maybe i should do that it's just it's a cycle it's boring it's long it's annoying but yeah just be like jake paul just embrace it or just yeah post a photo of you just flipping everyone off and just be like yeah what's up i don't care about you Talking about Dana White, so a few months back I watched Dana White play online poker with the Nelk boys. Um, and I was really observing his strategy because Dana White has been banned from multiple casinos for playing blackjack. He's been up millions. So he must have a strategy on how he wins. Really? Shit. I didn't know like, that. You, like, and he's definitely not counting cards because he's going at a really fast rate where I'm pretty sure he can't count cards. Um, but I figured out his strategy. I'm gonna share it with you, Christian. I'll share it to the, the early OG followers on how to win at Blackjack. So, Blackjack, the odds are in the casino's favor, like 51. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we continue, we're gonna test this out, right? Together, we'll go to the casino, we're gonna test it out, we have to. Oh. It'll be criminal not to. It would be criminal not to. Yeah, I think we should, yeah, we should. All right, continue, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I was considering if I should keep it low-key, but since you guys are the OG listen- listeners, I'll let you guys know. So, if you play perfect strategy, meaning it's like what to do in, if the dealer has that card, that number, and what you have, what to do, it's like perfect strategy. If you play perfect strategy, your odds of winning is 49% versus 51%. So you bring the odds like near 50-50. Now, let's say you play five... But- Oh, I think in the star casino is minimum 25. So you play 25, you lose, 25, you lose, 25, you lose. Just like flipping a coin, if you lose three times in a row and you're using the same deck of cards, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to win another three times in a row just because it's a 50-50 odd. Or the more time you lose, the more time you're going to win. Or another hypothesis is if you play and now you're down 100, down 200, down 300, if you keep playing, by the end of the night, you should earn it back up and you should be negative maybe $50. 
just because it's a 49-51 game. Okay, so you're saying it's like you've got to stay in it for the long haul, like just sit down at that table and just keep at it. So what Dana White does is he bets 5,000. And if he loses, 5,000. If he loses, 5,000. If he wins, five. if he goes another 5,000 he wins, he doubles up 10,000. If he wins again, 30,000. If he wins again, 40,000. So what he does is he hedges the downs and he goes highs on the ups. So the, the thing in blackjack as like the player, you get to choose how much you bet. So you can bet low on losses and just wait for a run of losses. And once you have a streak of wins, keep doubling up. So that's his strategy. Um, but, 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 you're all, you're assuming that, say you get three losses in a row, four losses in a row. Is, are you assuming that the constant is that the same deck of cards are being used, which haven't been shuffled? Yes. So in every table, I don't know if it's only in the States, but they have like a shoe and there's like four decks in the glass thing. So that means the, that is the same deck. Now in Australia, there's this machine, this, this electronic shuffling machine, but I'm pretty sure it has a fixed number of cards. Um, and then as the cards come out, if you keep losing, eventually that you will get a run of high cards towards your end because it's a 50-50 game. So unlike playing heads and tails, where literally you can get in a situation where it's just tails for 50 times in a row, that literally can happen. But when it comes to cards and there's only a limited amount of cards, there's so many times you can lose until there's just only high cards left. So in blackjack, you always want like high cards, like 10, nines, face cards, jacks, kings, aces. Like eventually there's going to be only high cards left and high cards play, I think in your favor, even if the dealer gets it, um, it sort of plays in your favor somehow. Like if something's a 49, 51% odds, if you, you have to, if you go through a, like a bunch of losses, you'll come up with, you'll get a bunch of wins. Right. I'm just trying to process it all in terms of just the feasibility of it. Um, so let's say... Yeah, I'm, I'm really um, just processing it. In, in, so in the cycle statement, the minimum for the actual blackjack is 25. So let's say we have 200 bucks. Divide that by 25, that gives us eight rounds. So that means we have eight rounds, and unless we lose eight times in a row, then we're out. But since it's 50-50, another thing with the learn perfect strategy, that's gonna be hard. Um, it's, it's actually pretty easy to rote memorize, but we'll have to memorize it. But with eight games, 25 you lost, 25 you lost, 25 you win, now you're only down 25, double up and go 50, let's say you win again, now you've actually made profit, you double up again and you go like 100, Let's say you lost. Now you're back down 50. And you go 25, 25, and you keep repeating that process. And basically, all you're waiting on is like a run of, like if, you, if it's 50, 50, and you get a, a four in a row losses, there's an equal chance that you can get four in a row wins. So you keep playing until you get four in a row wins. That's true. And okay. since in the four in a row losses, you just went 25, 25, 25. But in the four in a row wins, you go 25, 50, 75, uh, 100. And then you just cash out. And that would make sure to cover all your losses and make someone on top. But the thing is, you've got to be there for like a while. Because if you're saying like you start off with the 25s and then you say you, you lose three in a row, you're down 75 and then you win one now you're down 50 down 50 right you double up so and you, you win one so you go 50 then you win 100 you're up 75 yes and you can cash out now if you want or you could double up again oh up 50 because if you've already if you've lost three times in a row 75 and then you finally win you got the 100 
okay this is a lot this is a lot for me to process i'm just trying to, i'm just trying to vision it out but i can see what you're trying to say however it's still a big loss if you like go down 300 if you like if you put down 300 expected to win 600 and say you've lost like 10 times before that so you're down 250 so to and it's lose, like you're currently up 50 to lose 300 you have to lose so 300 divided by 25 you have to lose 12 times in a row yeah that's a lot that's a lot that is a lot yeah okay okay i'm seeing it so that means you you need to essentially just go in there willing to have like say two hundred dollars to just throw at one table one twenty five dollar table and then just keep going and i think so i'll send you the clip where how watch was analyzing how he plays um he only does it one-on-one so if there's other players that might things up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if he only plays one on one, that changes everything. Because yeah. when you have other players, you can't predict that. The tables at the casino are always filled with like the tape. Like there's yeah. probably five, six players at one table. That's yeah. impossible. And that's how can you do that? How do you judge that? Another like thing I used to do when I went to, and, and I think it's sort of ish work. Like if there was like a bunch of low cards coming out for every person, I knew next. Oh, always try to sit in the front. Where you get the first deal that definitely helps but i sit out like if there's like a bunch of low cards being dealt then i know that next round there will probably be maybe a nice high card so i go in the next round and i'll get some nice high cards i can just stand on and then if i was like if there's a bunch of low cards like you can sort of like suss it out ish but yeah that goes true. on to my next thing if something is 50 50 odds all you need is a 1% edge to win. So this long weekend during Anzac Day, I learned this game called Tua. This is something I never knew about, but apparently every single Anzac Day, 25th of April, all the pubs play this sort of Anzac war game called Tua, where you basically flip a coin, you go for heads or tails, and if you call it, you double your money, if you lose, you give up your money. So the odds are 50-50. And at first I was like, what the f*** is this game? So how it works, so we went to the bar, I was with the group, and how it works, there's just a bunch of people in a circle. And then there's a person that's gonna flip a coin. I was, usually there's three coins. The reason why they do three coins is because it's just, if you flip a coin, there's like uncertainty in flipping the coin, so they do three just to make it more even. And then with three, based on if it's two heads or two tails, um, that's what's going to be heads or tails. Um, so they flip a coin. But before they flip a coin, you literally take out, you, you like in the circle, you would, oh man, no one, that's why I have like a bunch of like small notes. So you literally would go 20 on heads, 20 on heads. And you just call out 20 on hands. And someone is going to be like, I got 20 on tails. And then you go up to that person, the person that either each bar is different, but if they're on tails in this case, they hold the money. So this person's 20 on tails, I'm 20 on heads. We meet up, I let him hold the money. So I'm calling heads and he's calling tails. If it lands on tails, he keeps the money. If it lands on heads, I get the money. So that was the whole premise of the game. At first I was like, what the f***? Like, it's 50-50, like, this is like a weird game. I'm seeing people bet pineapples. I'm like, what's a pineapple? 50s. Exactly. People throwing up 50s, people are like calling fives, tens. And then I was like, all right, I'll give this a try. And I was, and my strategy was like, if I want, like, I'm gonna try the Dana White strategy. But I'm going to just stick to heads the whole time. Just heads, heads, heads. Because if I want the best odds of 50-50, I'll just stick on heads. Yeah, because it's true. Because eh? if you keep changing your guess for a 50-50, you're more likely to get it wrong as opposed to, yeah. But I just kept losing. I was down like 25, down 40, down 60. And it just down to 80. I won once. Okay, now I'm minus. And now I'm only down 60. Lost again. Lost again. And, and then eventually I was down 100. And then I was like, oh, I'm out of money. All right, let's take out another 20 and break it. 
And now I'm down at 120. And in my mind, I'm like, if this is truly 50-50, I just need to keep playing and it's going to balance out. And this is something I learned from like gamblers. So there's this kid I follow where he just, like when he's, he's on a losing streak, he just keeps going. He just keeps going because he knows if the odds are like 49, 50, if you just keep playing, it's going to balance back out to uh, minus $50. Like it's, you know, we, we learned this in maths and statistical, like P, P, E, um, P and bracket E, potential, I don't know what that sounds called. But you sort of know that if you just keep playing or even out just because it's a 50, 50 game. So just kept playing and eventually it sort of evened out. And I started winning money, but I used the Dana White strategy, which didn't work in this case because it's a coin. It's always going to be 50-50, no matter how many heads in a row, that doesn't increase the chance of a tail. Like if you get 10 heads in a row, that wouldn't increase the chance of a tail coming up. So I was trying to show you where I'd go 20, then I'll double up to 40, and I'll get, I'll double up to 80. I've gone in as high as 80, where I won like, like I, I turned a 40 into $80, but I'd go ahead and bet 80, and I'd lose the 80. <laughs> And then I started observing. I was like, huh. What I was observing is like, one, every time, the reason why that doubling strategy never worked is because there's never been a head four times in a row. There's been heads, like there was like two or three times where there was heads three times in a row, but never four times in a row. There was never anything four times in a row. I was like, well, okay, that's an interesting stat. And then the next thing I notice that if someone flipped a heads or tails, there's a good chance that on their second flip, it was going to be the same heads or tails because of the same flipping motion, the same strength. And then that put me into the hypothesis of, oh, maybe the reason why after three times in a row, they lose. So they're also incentivized to get three heads in a row because each time they get it, the pot builds up and if they, they have an opportunity to either go again and double their money or take the money away from the pot. And that's like a separate thing. So they're incentivized to just sort of keep doubling up. But usually on the third time, that's when they're like three in a row, they're a bit nervous and they change something up and they buckle. Um, and that's usually why it goes switch. And another thing I've noticed, people who are like more like manly alpha, females that were alpha, they tend to go harder and they tend to flip a lot of heads. Whereas all the more feminine people or the less alpha, like even me, I flip the tail, like I'm more chill, like the, the less more chill people flip tails. So those are my three hypotheses. Uh, never is there three times, four times in a row. If the person did heads once, there's a good chance they'll do heads again, vice versa. And thirdly, based on looking at the person, you could maybe tell what their first flip is. So using those three things, I was able to go from like negative 120 to like up, like up 100, up 150. But that was at the very end. But there's like a lot of variables when you think about that, right? Like you have, like you made that hypothesis, but it's like, uh, in reality, it's still 50-50. As, as, as deep as we go, it's still 50-50. Exactly. It's, like, it's like if you go black or red at, casino it's always going to be one of the two and it's always like you always see the stats that come up and be like oh black was three times in a row it's not going to be black again but yeah it's like one of those things hey like holy crap you don't want to do that next time i go with that like go to the table see the type of spinners the type of dealers <laughs> that get majority red majority black and see if like somehow all the males seem to like roll a bunch of blacks and all the females tend to roll a bunch of reds yeah because it's true because there is a variable in terms of how fast they spin it yeah so they can either like spin it really fast or just let the roulette itself the roulette table just spin and then they just chuck the ball on pretty much you know what i mean so mm, interesting, <laughs> but like i feel like it's it's still pretty hard because it's, it's rolling yeah. and like slow fast the, the roulette itself it's still rolling and, and there's a placement of it so there's like still so much from variables. But what I well, learned from I'm, that talk I'm game, still trying. What I learned from that talk game is like all you need is just a few hypotheses that increase your chance of winning from fifty to fifty one percent and you're golden. Hundred percent. Like I'm down to try it. Like in terms of just see what happens. But at the end of the day it's like 
Yeah, you're I mean, playing with them, you know. Because I, mean? I don't think I can't pull that off in the casino for sure. The casino has so many variables, so many players, and like they got tons of people like like really educated to make sure you you lose all the time. Yeah, but like that's this, true. this local pub game of twelve with a bunch of drunk sort of people, like. I was like, damn, I'm excited to play Torp next year and see if I can clean up. Did you go to like multiple bars and play it or was it just one place? It was just one bar. Um, another guy, he would clean up eight grand. And his strategy was, if you get close enough to the person flipping the coin, there's a hypothesis. If the coin starts on head, there's a higher chance it's going to land on tails. If it's on tails, there's a higher chance it's going to land on heads. So you can literally just look at what's faced up and that would increase your odds of winning from like 50% to like 65. Still 50-50. It's like as much as I hate to say it, like it's still 50-50. I don't know. Like I just can't see it. Like oh, it's so hard to put your finger on it because at the end of the day, it's luck. Like you can't say it. Like you can hypothesize a lot. Like there's a lot of way. But like a coin flip is a coin flip for a reason in terms of it just being pure luck. There are definitely variables that go into it in terms of the strength and like, you know, everything else as well. But you're right. Like there is a big chance if it's starting on heads, it'll finish on tails. It's just, I don't know. It's just hard. It's hard to like process. You know what I mean? Like it's like, ah. Oh. I agree. A similar sort of, this is sort of where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely like, my mind works a bit differently and I'm a bit more crazy. It's like, a similar thing is when I drive. Like, when I drive, like, if it's on a road six, I just cruise control at 65. And then sometimes I catch a green and then that might lead to another green. But most of the time I catch a, like, it goes to red and I end up stopping and the person driving 55 comes right up behind me. And the extra speed made no difference. But... All these little things, like if that helps me catch a yellow, that yellow can spiral into another yellow, into another yellow, and now I'm like, I save like three minutes. But that one yellow could just spiral into another red, and that person just ends up catching up with me. So all these little things are just like increasing your odds at life or at driving or at whatever it is, but like a tiny percent, and most of the time, it doesn't make a difference, but over a long period of time it might so that's that wasn't a, the best metaphor but yeah i think i get what you're trying to say in the sense that in the long in the like i think the moral of this entire thing is like in the grand scheme of things if you're in it for the long haul these sort of premonitions or these sort of theories etc they can come to pass because at the end of the day if you're taking the statistics and the odds on you not know, continuously flipping a coin or measuring a certain thing a certain amount of times in the long haul you will see trends and patterns you will see things that are favorable and not favorable and you'll tend to lean towards and and become invested toward those things you know what i mean and i think that's what i mean if i was playing two up there i'd 100 percent be the same mindset at the moment it's just because i'm not in that environment if i was in that environment right now i'll be 100 percent with you i'll be like dude let's go i reckon tails it's like at the casino it's like all the time it's like oh dude nah it's been black three times in a row don't do black you know what i mean and you lose all rationality and you become very what's the word for it you become um i don't know you just lose your rationality you become irrational you become um, more impulsive and you just become like more likely to you know take the gamble take the risk on on certain premonitions and behaviors and yeah look at that i rate it you, you still came up top so i rate that i was actually down by the end of it like in the last two matches i lost like 40 40 20 and then i went i was like up like 150 d down my set like i was like so much money was in my wallet and by the end of it when i was counting i was like this can't be right this can't be right and then i was like oh damn i ended up down 30 but which was pretty good it spent it was like a whole day on the down 30 down 30 is like you've had a good time you've had a good night it's just like it's just a night out obviously it feels bad about it but like if you're going to be you can only gamble with money that you're fine with losing so kids gamble responsibly dude one of our friends he was just doing pineapples all day down 300 within the first two hours and he was out <laughs> oh. see because that's when the dangers come see because then um, you can have all these theories and I, I wouldn't say guesswork but I'd say like 
yeah, let's call them theories. You have these theories and you you pick up on people's behavior. You pick up on the, you know, the 65% chance of it being a tails from the first flip if it's a heads on the top or, you know, the opposite facing side and pick up on the strength of the flip, etc. But at the end of the day, you, you keep chucking pineapples in, you keep chucking the 50s in, you go 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 and knee deep and you realize you're 300 down and you realize, okay, you can't double up on a win and try and get it back because it's a 50 50 at the end of the day you know what i mean it's like i don't know like it's hard to think if he kept playing he should even out at zero just from maths on your but on if you was to side with you if he just kept playing he would go back to zero because it's 50 50 correct technically yes but also technically no interesting because if it's 50 50 all the time there's still a 50-50 chance that he can lose. So if he's always betting on the same thing, like it's 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 more mathematically correct to just, you know, head like double down and just pick one and just stick to it the whole night. But at the end of the day, yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say. If it's 50-50, he wins five, he loses five. It, that's 100% should be it. But like, it's not, it's not the case. Like it, it, it's I don't know it's it's a tough one eh like it's weird what is 50-50 if 50-50 means that he would end at zero but if it was not the perfect scenario he should get close to 50-50 and maybe be negative $50 or maybe up $50 or be around zero he should be in the negative 100 or positive 100 if he just keeps playing Um, that's true that's the maths that's true. Yeah. So, like, there's actually a lot of papers on this. This is interesting. So, there's why everything is 50 50, two state systems, philosophical foundations of religions, and universal concepts of 50 50, blah, blah, blah. But, like, yeah, I see what you're trying to say in the sense that ideally, in a 50 50 world, everything nets out to zero, right? That's what it should do. But. And there is a chance, obviously, that there's literally just a thousand tails in a row that's still possible but then there's a good chance that there's going to be a thousand heads in a row if you keep playing it out like if you keep flipping a coin over like a hundred data sets oh here's the best scenario if you flip a coin over ten data set a hundred data set ten thousand data set do do you agree that there'll be like a 47 53 split 49 51 split but rarely 100%. nearly never will there be like a 30 50, 70 50. split uh yeah yeah you're right there will never be like a 30 70 but there'll be like a 47 53 yeah I, exactly I see that. so if you kept playing it out you'll get you know <laughs> Yeah, I, okay, uh, yeah, I see what you mean, but you have to set yourself. But in that same time, you can go 10. Say you just went, say you had two up and you had $100 and you went 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 every single time without a miss, 10, 10, 10, 10. There's still a chance you only win two out of eight. However small it may be, there is still a chance, and but it's not likely. That's with the, the wins, thing. now you have $40 and you play another $40. Or you'd be like me and just keep cashing out more money and just keep playing until you have a hundred games in a row and it evens out around fifty, uh, you know, forty-seven, fifty-three. And you're like, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, now I only lost minus thirty instead of minus eighty. But like to even get to that point, you need to like, I don't, I don't know. know. It's I'd like it's tough. It's, I know. Yeah, it's tough. It's intense as in well. Spot, like this, I wanted to stop. Like I was down one twenty. Um, I should stop but I just sort of knew that rule so much and I watched so much gamblers I was like oh wow this is when people usually stop and let the casino win big yeah. but if you keep playing you'll only be down $50 yeah that's true but yeah now that I'm thinking about it it's like there's nothing at the casino though that is pure 50-50 because even at yeah, the roulette tables nothing. there's still the green it's, thing there yeah it's they're like I think the roulette it's like 40, 57% in their odds <laughs> Even for the black and white? Maybe for the black no. and white. Let's sorry, see. sorry, the black and red. Sorry, black and red. Because yeah. you know you can go. Let's do the maths. It's 50 divided by 102. 
because there's two greens. Yeah. The, oh, well, it depends. It's either one green or two oh, greens. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. So if it's one, then their odds, their advantage is only half a percent. If it's two greens, their odds is one percent. So not too bad. So technically, if you're down on a roulette table, you just have to keep playing. And you just you'll leave like playing. negative ten, negative twenty. I remember, like, you just got to sit there because uh, when I went one time, we would, there was these random other guys with us. They slapped because I was playing 50s, just straight 50s on red. I'd pull out every now and then, then I'd come back in. Then I was winning a lot. I was up like 300. These guys, these guys next to me, they just went in, slapped $600 in red, looked away, won, did it again, won, did it again, lost. I mean, it doesn't matter because I won twice. But it's like, I don't know, for me, I'm, 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 there's like always a little bit of like a, I lose the rationality in my head where I'm kind of like, oh, no, it's been three reds in a row. It, like That's what gambling does to you, makes you question everything. It's like if you don't have a stable and rational mind, you can't go into gambling expecting to win because you let emotions come over you. I'm thinking, I'm looking at them like, oh, there's been three reds in a row. Oh, I'm not going to do red again. I'm going to lose. But as opposed to if you go in there with a game plan, a thorough game plan, you stick it through. Like it's, let's go, let's go, let's test it out. I like the black, blackjack. Like if I go with that, I want to figure out blackjack, but... The thing that does stop me is like, how do I use a strategy when there's multiple people? That's the thing, because that's what I keep thinking about, because the casino is extremely busy, and there's so many people, and there's always tables are always full. Blackjack's the most popular game at the casino. Well, roulette is probably. Blackjack's one of the popular card games, right? It's interesting. It's interesting, but I think we definitely need to test it out, and we'll probably come on in later episodes. Yeah, we'll and, need to learn perfect game, perfect strategy to get our odds to like freaking 49.75% our favor, which is still, you know, losing. And then just adding that little edge of, okay, based on if there's a bunch of low cards being dealt, there's a slightly higher chance of us getting dealt a high card. Yeah. And that's well, what we need. I'm down to go this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go. Um, do dude, that's another thing I want to talk about. So the other day I was hanging out with some friends and they're all like younger group of friends and well, you know we had dinner we're talking we're lying down listening to music watching the the starlights and the cool room and the the stars on the ceiling and then we listen to each other music and talk about traveling then we start playing x playstation 5 playstation 4 playing worms and we start daring you know the loser has to go skinny dipping this and that and then it's 12 a.m. I'm sitting there, I'm bored of playing worms. I'm like, okay, maybe I should go home because I'm, I'm pretty tired. And the song loses. It's like, yeah, let's go skinny dipping. You have to go skinny dipping. It's like, all right, I'll go skinny dipping. And I'm like, all right, I'll drive to the beach. Drive to the beach is cool. And then now they're like butt naked, <laughs> running into the water. We're blasting music out on our speaker, running around with sand in our feet and shoes. Um, go back to the g and drive home and now it's like 1.30 in the morning and I'm like man I feel old like I, I wish I could just be at bed, in bed lying and watching a TV show right now like that's what I've noticed when I was young I used to live for those moments those late night cruises late night running around with the boys skinny dipping listening to music freaking playing games together and freaking daring each other the loser has to do this but now I'm just like what yeah you're getting old like even uh, yeah like at 10 p.m i'm like it's nights out lights out i just want to be in bed just watching it like the novelty of all that just decreases and you just kind of just become like oh, i just don't see the point i just like just want to be in bed comfortable and just ah uh, just thinking about it i just can't do it i honestly can't yeah i'm like a, i'm just like an old man now and like it's Recently, I just finished How I Met Your Mother, and man, like the the ending, like the feels, like you've grown up with these people, and they they did do like a time lapse into how they grow up, and the saddest thing, and then I was like, wow, this is so relatable. It's like the group, so it just naturally grows apart as life becomes more and more, as they get kids, as they get a wife, as they start doing all their own things, and they just naturally grow apart and become their own individuals, like together. When you have law of attraction, if you just hang together, you just gotta to be all the same level. 
But if you start splitting out, yeah. you start growing and becoming your own person. And now everyone's at a different level and you just can't match. And that's like, you know, we've seen that happen. It's like, damn, like even what we have now, who knows what's going to happen in the next two years, let alone 20 years. And that's it's true. crazy. One of the things was like most of the people that you see at your wedding, there's a good chance in the next 50, 30, 20 years, you're not going to see them ever again. A hundred percent, hundred percent. It's weird to think, eh? but that's that's what happens. Like I just, you just, I mean, if you have a core group of people that you always like constantly see, I don't know. I feel like it could be different based on the circumstances. That was the same thing because the TV show they were like a tight group of friends for like ten years, and they were able to grow apart just due to life, due to work, just due to things they can't control, like getting offered a job overseas. Um, having a kid, um, moving to the suburbs. Like these are things that they just couldn't control. It just happens. Like what, literally what happens if I just have to move overseas? Like now we're no longer talking. Yeah, uh, obviously that's we, true. We'll still, do the, we'll still do the podcast virtually. I'm just saying that's just like a <laughs> fake sound. like, that's not going to happen. But like life is like fleeting. And I think the, the biggest nostalgic moment is like, wow, they were having the time of their lives from yeah. like 25 to 30. So many memories created, so many stories created. And then now they're just like old, getting home early, looking at the kids. And they know that, damn, the good times are over. And that thought is so scary. It is scary, but like it, I just don't like to dwell on that because the minute you start to dwell on it, it's just like, ah. Oh. And I'm scared to not dwell on it because um, I'm scared that when you don't dwell on it, that's when by the time you're 30, you're like, I wish I lived in it more. Oh, I wish that's I had true. more of it yeah. more. Because I feel like no one dwells in that and no one is scared of that. And I'm like, but I think the solution, my solution is just to record everything. Because I have a feeling that like when I'm older, like even now when I look at clips of me when I was 15 traveling, I get really happy. I get really joyous. I'm like, wow. That's awesome, and then I and I see little Andy, and I'm like, wow, like I, it's like it's like a memory that was locked away for so long that you suddenly like you forgot that you even had those memories, and you look back on it, yeah. I think filming is like a hack to really lock in that moment. Yeah, yeah yes, but it's like it always happens. It always happens, but. Look, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna pause the brakes on this one before we go even deeper because we definitely can, but. 32, done. 32 weeks done. 20 more weeks and we're half a year. Another episode in the vault. You're right, damn. 20 more weeks and it's 52 episodes. Damn. That's one whole year. That's one whole year of every week we've been doing it. 20, 20 weeks would take us to where? Dude, That's... on the 52 episode, we'll do that in person and, and we'll watch our episode one. We'll do that <laughs> our reaction video. We'll watch our episode one and just see who we were a year ago. I'm excited. It's like a time capsule. Yeah, hundred percent. Even I started looking through the few of the older episodes recently. It was like, ah, oh, there was a lot that we talked about. There was a lot that we've done, and it's we've continued to evolve. We haven't stopped. We haven't slowed down. So check out our old stuff. It's all on the YouTube channel now. So please, I've linked it in the last episode, in on our Spotify and thing description. If you clicked it, you're a real one. If you didn't, please click it. Please click it right now. Please, please click the, <laughs> click the link. Watch us on YouTube if you want a visual representation or visual sort of stimulation of what's going on as we're talking you know a lot of times our editor throws things on the screen that you guys definitely are missing out you're listening to this on audio but at the same time if you're watching this on youtube listen to us on podcast on podcast spotify i agree i agree thank you so much for listening thank you for your time and peace peace